today's video, we're going to be solving the problem, the job sequencing problem. So the question says, given a set of n jobs where each job I has a deadline and a profit associated with it, each job takes one unit of time to complete and only one job can be scheduled at a time. We earn the profit associated with job if and only if the job is completed by its deadline. Find the number of jobs done and the maximum profit. Jobs will be given in the form of job ID, deadline and profit associated with that job. Okay, so let's understand what the question is saying. So let's assume we're given a question like this, where our where, where the very first index is going to be the, you know, the ID of the job. Then we have the deadline associated with it, and then we have a profit associated with it, right? So what the question says is that in the very first in, in the very first obj, uh, job it, job object, what you need to do is you need to finish this job within a time span of four hours. Let's assume it's given the metrics is given hours. So you need to finish this in four hours, but if, and also that every job is completed in one hour. So you have a span of four hours of time to complete that one hour, one that one job, right? For the second object, for this object, the deadline is one hour, which means that you only have one hour and this job does get completed in only one hour of time. So you need to finish it within that one hour. Same goes for the third job and same goes for the fourth job. Now, these three jobs, since they have the same deadline, not all jobs can be completed at the same time. Since all the jobs have one hour of maximum time to be completed, we'll obviously take the one which will give us a maximum profit, which is this one. And we'll try to complete this job. This will give us a profit of 40, let's say dollars, right? And the second one in this, and the job over here, the very first index, right? It has, it has a deadline of four hours, which means that we can finish this job within four hours, right, you know, within a span of four hours, and we we have to just allocate one hour of that, one hour to just this job. So if we finish this job in one hour, we already have one more hour, we already have more than one hour, we have three hours to complete this job, right, and we, we just need one hour to finish this job, right, so we can finish two jobs within a given, within this given job range, and we can get a maximum profit of 60, which is 20 plus 40, right. So this is what the question is, guys. All right, now let's see what we are gonna to do to solve this problem. So let's assume we're given a question over here like this, where this is the job IDs and these are the profits and deadlines associated with it, right? Now to solve this problem, the greedy way to solve this problem would obviously be to, uh, you know, just sort it in the basis of its profit. Now, when we sort it on the basis of its profit, you can see, you know, this you'll get something like this over here, okay? Now, when we sort it on the basis of this profit, you can just see one thing over here, right? Now, the deadline for this job, the very first job is two, right? But it doesn't mean that we need to finish it within, you know, within two hours or something. We need to finish it in the very first hour or something like that. We can finish it in the very last hour. Let's just say if this job has a deadline of two and if we finish this, you know, we just make this ID over here only. And if we finish this at this deadline over here, at its, at its last deadline, which is going to be two hours, if you finish at the very last hour, we'll still make a profit of $40, $80. Now, for the second index, we have a deadline of six. Let's say we finish this at the very last index over here, like here. We have an index of three, and we finish at this at the very last hour, which is the sixth hour, right? We we'll get a profit of 70. Now, over here, the fourth one again has a deadline of six hours, but this doesn't mean that we need to finish it in the very six hour itself. We can finish it in an hour before the six hour also, right? We're given a time span of six hours, okay? We're given six hours and we can allocate each, since all the jobs only take one hour to complete, we can allocate each jobs to that any one hour between that. So the job four over here, we can allocate to just over here. So that, which this means that, We'll also make a profit of these first three. We can make a profit out of all three of them. Now the next job, it has a deadline of five, but both the fifth, but the fifth one is already allocated. But this doesn't mean we need, need we just need to allocate it over there. We can allocate in a time span before that as well. We can allocate it over here. So the index two can be allocated over here. Now for the next one, we have a job of four. Deadline of four, but this is again occupied. But this doesn't again this doesn't mean that we need to finish it. Up, you know, 
just place it over there. We can place it in a time span before that as well. We can do it in the very third hour to gain a maximize to maximize a profit. So we'll place the fifth index over here and we'll maximize a profit by that. And the very last one over here, since this one has a deadline of two, but it's still occupied by the very first index, we can do it in the very first hour itself and we can gain the maximum profit. So job eight will give us index eight will give us a maximum profit itself. Now for the last two, the fourth one, uh, for the last two where we have deadline of four and deadline of two, since all the array, since all of them are now occupied, right? We have the max deadline of six, right? Since we have a max deadline of six over here, when we loop through it, we can find that the max deadline is six, right? Now, since we have a max deadline of six, this means that you can't do any task, you know, but before that now, since we allocated all the hours for us, we allocated six hours of our time by the first six jobs. And since we have two more jobs, we can't allocate more time to them because we this job needs to get done in four hours, right? But the very first four hours are already occupied. Even for the last two one, for the last one, which has a deadline of two, the first two hours are already occupied. So we can't do the last two over here. And why we aren't doing those two? Because those are not going to give us the maximum profit. These first six, which we allocated, are going to give us the maximum profit because we already sorted them. That's why we place them in the six, uh, these six in the result array, okay, to maximize a profit. So this is what we're going to do, right? Now, this is what the method is, guys. And this is how we're going to solve the problem. So let me just remove this over here quickly. And so this is what the code for the problem is, guys. Okay. So this is how you're going to solve the problem. What we're going to do in the question over here is we're going to use, take a maxi as a counter over here just to find the maximum you know, deadlines we have. What is the maximum deadline we can have right now? This will be our maxi. We'll keep an array over here. Uh, I'll just tell you what that array is going to do in a minute. Uh, so firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the array. What we're going to do is we're going to loop through the jobs array and we're going to find out the maximum deadline we can have. So for our previous question, the maximum deadline was six, right? So we're going to store six over here in maxi, right? Then we'll make a result array in which we'll store all, which basically we'll just store, you know, all minus ones so that we can just keep a check of which, uh, if what, what timer is getting filled at what, by which job, by which job ID. Okay. So that we don't, you know, try to fill in those hours by any, you know, jobs that are not going to give us the maximum profit. Okay. So that is what result is going to do for us. Okay. Now we're going to keep a total count. Uh, we're going to keep a total variable and a jobs done variable because we need to return those two as our outputs over here. Okay. And now what array is going to do is we're going to just going to loop through the jobs array and we're going to keep the profits and deadlines. We don't need the index, honestly. So we'll just loop through and keep the pro profits and deadlines in an array and we'll just sort them in the reverse uh, reverse manner like I showed you before. We'll sort them in the reverse manner so that we get the maximum profit out of it. We get the maximum profit in the very first, you know, in the very first box so that we just loop through in that manner. Now what we're going to do is we'll loop through the array. Uh, so since we're going to loop through the array, okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the deadline, the max deadline. So what we're going to do is uh, since we had, so let's just take this example over here. So let me, let me just show you the same question again and let's paste it over here. Okay. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to loop through this thing. One second. And this is total here. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the whole array. We're going to loop through the, all of these things. And we're going to loop through the very last deadline over here. So the deadline is two over here. Okay. But since we're doing a over here, we've done a zero based indexing, right? In Python, you can't, there's no zero based or one based indexing. All of it's going to be zero based indexing only, right? So in, since we're going to do that, we need to just do a minus one over here. So because we're going to do from zero and one, not one and two, which is not possible in Python. So we're just going to loop through from zero and one. So we're going to loop through one and we're going to see whether a deadline is filled or not in that result. Okay. Since it's not, it's not filled. 
we're just going to place our variable over here. The six is going to be placed over here, that index over here. We're just going to increment job then by one and we're going to just going to add the profit of it to total. And we're just going to break out of it because we don't want to continue in the loop after we've done that. Then what we'll do is we'll go to the very second element over here, which is three, six, and 70. Now we'll check for six, right? We'll just jump directly to the very last deadline over here, which is six. We'll check if six is... Well, we'll just check if this uh, value of six, basically not six, which is five, because we're going to do a zero based indexing, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five. If five is filled with minus one or not, it's filled with minus one. So what we'll do is we'll just change it with the three. It's uh, we'll change it with the three. We'll add jobs done to plus one. We'll get two jobs done, and we'll in the end we'll just do a total plus equal to one, so that we get the profit of it as well. Okay, and we'll just break out of the loop. So this is what we're basically just doing, guys. Now, let me just show you an example where, okay, let's just do the third example then. Since in the third example, six is already filled, right? Over here, the five, not six, the five, because we're doing an array minus one. So if it's already filled, what we'll do, we'll just check if it's equal to minus one. Since it's not equal to minus one, we'll just go to a value lesser than that, which is over here, and we'll just check it whether it's minus one or not. If it is minus one, we'll just place that value over there, place its index over there. We'll just increment the jobs done and we'll just increment, add to the total value, add its profit to the total value. And we'll just do that for all the rest of the values. So, and in the end, since we just need to return a list of the list as the answer output. So we'll just return the jobs done and the total in a list format. And if we run the code, Yeah, we get this output and let's just submit it. So yeah, it's submitted guys. So yeah, that's how you solve this problem. So if you like the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Uh, if, you if you have any doubts or any suggestions for me to do better, let me know in the comments below. If you have any ideas or topics you want to be covered, let me know in the comments as well. Um, or also, if you want any new, you know, late code videos to be done or Geeks for Geeks videos to be done, let me know in the comments below. Uh, check, do check out my podcast. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.